welcome back. It's breakfast with the birds. My goodness. Um, I, I, I heard that most of them fly south. But we should have you had a little bit of a break. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> A very good morning to you and to all of our viewers here and wherever you may be around the world. Now, we uh, are, are looking at some of those birds that we uh, can find. Us. And um, tell us we were on was the osprey, wasn't it? Yes, we, we um, looked closely at the osprey in the last episode. And I actually split it into two parts because Basically, I wanted to show the, the osprey as we would see it in Barbados, but unfortunately it doesn't breed in Barbados, so I enlisted the help of several um, share some with me so that we can see a bit more about your life history. Good, because I, I was kind of curious, you said it doesn't breed in Barbados and you recruited all these people. Like you want to make sure what you recruited them to do. <laughs> well, as from you could see, as you could see from the pictures on the screen just now, the osprey is a really large bird and that, that's sorry, what the osprey can believe for yes. a bit of a bird watching episode in St. Philip. And you saw this um, bird? Mm -hmm. She surely did. And uh, she can believe I have a feather that it left behind. I, I meant to bring it this morning. Oh, lovely. <laughs> the osprey left a feather for you. Oh. So it's, it's a large, it's a five to six foot wing spot. That's the angle I see. Before it, it dives down to catch its prey, and the picture on the bottom right would be the image that it would be seen as it would dive prior to its diving. I'm going to use some pictures now from some friends in, in the U.S. And here is, here is a picture of an osprey to catch um, the that happened. gland at mm -hmm. its tail, um, tail section, which it, it uses to, to spread oil around its wings. In this ep ep uh, Um, photograph here we, we can see an osprey actually emerging with, with a fish mm -hmm. uh, that's just caught and um, the this is really a, from I think he's in New Jersey. Now what he's going to do with all of that because that fish is, is quite large. <laughs> <laughs> yes it is a big fish. Um, the largest this fish that has been recorded is a 2.5 pound fish, which is quite large. But do they save leftover fish? In, the, in this particular fish, see, he, he, he or she made a dive in at a, at a hole. Set a fish and got one in each talon. Dropped a few more. So sometimes the chances are just too many. <laughs> but. When they catch a fish, they'll, they'll go off to, to eat, but to get... I can't say the bacon, but bring home uh, a meal such as this to share amongst the rest of the, the family. Yes, we're going to see that in a few minutes. Notice, notice that as it was flying there, it... It had the fish oriented head first mm -hmm. because it, it's quite uh, smart aerodynamically. It positions the fish so the minimum says it's flying, oh, making it difficult okay. to fish. That's the minimum. And it'll go off now and it'll, it'll find a branch or something to, to eat its meal on. And this one is really happy. As you can see, it, it's there. Perch with, with the fish and it's telling the world, I've got my breakfast. <laughs> Jack wants to know at what point is the fish dead. Catching a fish, fish live, you know. As you can see, it starts just relish the brain. It, it probably gets some intelligence from the brain and some eyesight from the eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, when it goes down and catches the fish, the talons really penetrate. 
saturate the fish quite significantly and we've seen the fish kind of wiggling as it as it flies to its perch to mm -hmm. eat it. It doesn't seem to stir on it. Maybe it just tightens the grip and mm -hmm. makes and it a little more painful <laughs> in depth. Really. Yeah. This, this, this is a superb picture. Uh, um, it, I, I, I call it eye to eye because there's the eye of the fish looking up at the eye of the osprey and at that point we assume the fish is dead but <laughs> it's we're not really sure. mm -hmm. quite an interesting picture. But we're still seeing the, 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 the osprey in a rather greedy, selfish mood. I'm not seeing any sharing. You'll, you'll see it in a minute. <laughs> um, we move now to, to nest building. And these are the things that we definitely will not see here in Barbados because ospreys do not nest in Barbados. Um, this is a picture taken by Nancy Elwood in, in Florida. In Florida, the nesting material is somewhat different to New Jersey, as we'll see. In, in subsequent pictures and they bring this sort of fluffy material back to somewhere in a tree, usually a, a crotch in a tree and they'll, they'll build a nest there and the male is the one that brings the material and he basically nest moves or disappears. Mm -hmm. Ospreys mate for life incident, once they've found a mate they will mate, they'll produce young and then the young will fledge and they go off in different directions mm -hmm. and Months later, they'll return from wherever they went in the world to the same location, with meeting the same mate that they had before. Here we, we can see the, the, the female. She looks like Anne Sherwood. Trees, but they also build their nests in, in, on the top of the light, light poles, power poles. This is somewhere in New Jersey, and apparently, to, because the osprey is so important, they cut the power to that particular pole. So it's a pretty important bird to cut the power. I guess they had to reroute for the, for the pole. Let and me get the birds by they, cutting off the electricity after they've taken um, residence. I'm sure they would have found some way to, to continue powering the pl places that were powered from it. But yes, they did cut the power at this location at that particular pole. That is amazing. Um, because the osprey is important. What we have to remember is that the ospreys were almost um, rendered extinct by the incredible use of DDT back in the 50s and 60s. Actually all raptors were threatened because they were being poisoned. Being at the top of the food chain, the, the poisons kind of accumulate. Mm -hmm. So as they captured their prey, whether it's an osprey or a green falcon or whatever, they got the concentrated poisons mm. and they were both being poisoned and were getting very weak. Sat on the eggs, they would crush the eggs. Which is just, it did look pretty big. Yeah, in our first slide we showed that it was five to six feet, so it is a Perfect. large bird. In the previous picture we just saw is one of the other areas that Osprey will never Nest on it. It's a mm -hmm. channel marker mm -hmm. somewhere in the one of the channels in the sea in New Jersey, and that's a perfect location mm -hmm. because they've got a home sitting over the water. Uh, yeah. That's what you can do this discussion very shortly um, as we continue breakfast with the birds. And you know, I, I think we're going to have to. Uh, take an opportunity to, to not only um, see how they actually pray, but uh, they actually, you know, not only care for their chicks as well. That's another area we're going to be touching on. Isn't that right, John? Yes, we yes. will come back after the break and we look at the actual raising of chicks and what people have done to to encourage the, the ospreys the to nest. He wants to eat them. Excellent. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> uh, that's why I was asking about the size of the bird. because. <laughs> It looks like a fair, you know, this Christmas coming and we're looking, uh, you, and we can't afford a turkey <laughs> anymore. <laughs> we can get a little os osprey or two in the oven. Yeah, um, talk to us uh, uh, about, I was fascinated about the fact that you said that, that there's, and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, what's the advantage of using those light poles uh, and, or, or channel markers? Well... Um, the osprey will actually choose where it wants to nest. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 
They basically, they choose a nest that is within a reasonable radius of a source of, of water. Oh, okay. um, in bigger countries, say, sorry, not um, have here. Um, long time ago, <laughs> but um, the the picture on screen shows one of the choices that that they would have made, which would. being on a channel marker as we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lovely pole sitting in the sea marking a, a, a navigational channel mm -hmm. and it's got a platform which they your meals mm -hmm. because and they'll catch their, their fish for their young and for, for the female. The, the male basically provides all the, the hunting and, and food for the mm -hmm. female and the young. When and it's a raccoon in, in that environment. Definitely not. <laughs> but you know, in in some areas, the the osprey have become, as we mentioned, had a proxy called the New Jersey osprey, where they have created nesting platforms. They take a, a utility pole basically, and they build a platform on the top of it, and those two. Y-shaped pieces are mm -hmm. perching points so mm -hmm. that when the male comes back with the food, mm -hmm. he can perch the end away from it. So being used not just in, I've used them in, in England, at a number of places around around the, the world where they want to encourage ospreys to nest, mm -hmm. they've created these platforms. Our, our next image is will show the use of some of these platforms. Here, here is a male osprey bringing some nesting material back to one of those nesting platforms. And as you can see, if you compare it with the earlier here in the material, where he's bringing the right thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. she's carefully examining what he's bringing. I love these pictures. And, um, they should she, have a comic strip next. <laughs> Let's do it. Let me give this stick a good look. Well, we, we can have you caption them. <laughs> <laughs> and once the nest has been, it's time for me to put the nest. And within seconds, they have what is called the cloacal kiss. What? And Sorry, pardon me? The cloacal kiss, where they, mm -hmm. the male inseminates the female, mm -hmm. and the job is done. And once um, that, that has been done, then you get some eggs. Mm. And... I'm, I'm fascinated by the wings, though. If we could just go back to that photograph for a second. You know, at the edge of the wings, the, the, those, those feathers kind of stick Span out. Span out, yeah. yeah. Yes, um, those are crucial for the, the, the way that the osprey flies and how it has to maneuver. Um, flight, flight feathers vary depending yeah. on the, the type of bird it is. It's mm -hmm. like the beak of the bird. The, the beak on the osprey is a very different. Osprey has here, it's fish. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke last episode, the beak works like a, like a knife, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it cuts the, the meat and it has the hook for tearing the, the flesh. Mm -hmm. So the, the wings are modified to accommodate the type of flight of the osprey to the eggs per brood. Basically, they hatch at different periods. The first one will hatch about five days ahead of the rest. Mm -hmm. And this is a survival technique because if, if the food is, is scarce, the, fe the, f the female and male can, can um, focus on raising at least one good chick. Mm. If if there's a scarcity of food, that will basically grab on it will receive all the food. Mm -hmm. so if food is in, in good supply, then there wouldn't be a problem. This is, this is what the little chicks look like as they after, hatch out. They're, they're basically covered in down, and their eyes are open when they're born too. Some, some birds, their eyes are closed at birth. But their but eyes they lay are open. these eggs the same time, but they hatch at different periods? Yes. Okay. Nature has worked it out that one egg is going to hatch about five days before the rest okay. and it, it's a way of ensuring survival of at least one bird from from the, the
to by there mm. and feed it to the chicks. And as you can one chick is being fed with bits of fish. Um, as we said, their diet is fish. A very rare circumstance when they will eat anything ever. Um, but it's live fish that they will feed on. And the chicks went. Will, will grow and, and our next picture will show what they look like as they get bigger. Um, they, they can raise up to four chicks but more often our mm -hmm. supply is... is, is um, uh, here is the, the chick on the left and probably the female on the right. He's big, uh, the chick is big but still expecting to be fed, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Always a free lunch if possible. <laughs> But eventually they, they will get to the stage where they, um, they're mature enough to, to fly and they how to fish. Mm -hmm. And they'll strap over the side. Not quite, a, quite an incredible picture. This is called <laughs> a blowout. Mm -hmm. And um, the chick is actually releasing its bowels. Oh. Otherwise, no. Well, Defecating. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this particular image is an incredible image taken by a photographer called Ta. But this is a sequence of photographs that she's put together. And you can see the osprey comes down and drags its talons through the water and then takes off again. It's not fishing here, it's just cleaning its feet. <laughs> Getting rid of all the, all the debris from mm -hmm. It's last feed. Mm -hmm. So that fascinating. That These basically brings us to the to the end of our, our series. I like Nancy L are incredible photographers and I always enjoy looking at their stuff. I brought along two books I just want to show the covers of quickly if we can just mm -hmm. Zoom in. in my research for this this um, program, I found two books that I thought were particularly interesting. A Season of Flight and Wonder. It's Return called Return of the Osprey. Of the Osprey. It's a, a book, a great the behavior of the osprey. This is it. There are no photographs, unfortunately. Is, is, is it a love story? Or drama. <laughs> it's a bit of both, actually. Uh, <laughs> this other book is the the Rut, the Rutland Water Ospreys, and it's it's a fascinating book because of a group, and they they fought to to bring the the ospreys back by cap capturing taking young ones from the nest and <coughs> reintroducing them to create nests in England. Mm -hmm. They were very successful and the book is a very well illustrated book. It's fascinating reading and there's lots of pictures and drawings and whatnot. So those are two books that um, I particularly interested in for me in preparing for this little se se series here. Wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff. We are much better educated about uh, our life this morning. Trust me, and, and even more fascinated by some of the things you've shared with us. Next week, we're going to have a look at the pair. In his, um, I did the Osprey. We bring photographs of the Falcons must get him. <laughs> it'll, it'll be just short of Christmas. Dr. John Webb, it's always good to see you. We're going to take a break.